Horizon Kids! Woohoo! Happy Welcome. Sunday. Welcome to Sunday. This is vlog number 18. 18. You ready, Carly? Ready? Three, two, one. I, I don't even know what I was doing that time. Yeah, that didn't work. There we go. No, there, yep, yep. there. there 18. <laughs> yep, so vlog number 18, and things are about to get really fun in Whoa. Horizon Kids. Because summer is here, and we've got some fun things going on. It's pretty exciting. We've got some good plans. They are all ready so for you to know. Excited. So as always, before we do anything, make sure you like this video. So if you're watching and you like it, give yep. us a thumbs up. I think we're now at 84 subscribers as well. So we're come so on, close. 16 more. We can do it. <laughs> Maybe by the 20th, 20th vlog? Maybe we'll get there, finally. Yeah. So, Whew, give us there. a subscribe if you haven't Help us. already. Now, now for the exciting bit. Yes. Okay, I'm very I'm excited. I'm not, 100 subscribers is pretty exciting to me. Probably. Yeah, but we're not there yet. Anyway. We'll, we'll be excited when we get there. Okay, sure, sure. But, we've got some fun news. We talked about it last week, but we didn't spoil the surprise <gasps> because today we are introducing two very awesome people yep. onto the Horizon Kids team. Now, here's here's some fun stuff. So you might remember, let's see if they can guess who our interns are before we tell them. So first hint. Well, first Carly, what is an intern? Oh, an intern. That's a really great <laughs> question, Jacob. You know I ask the great questions on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, how do you describe an intern? These interns will be with us, with Horizon Kids, for the summer, helping us make summer super fun. Yeah, you'll see them in our videos, yep. you'll see them in our summer party minis, it's all over great. the place. Yep. So, here's some hints about who they are. First hint is that both of these people recently did a message on the vlog. So, it might have been even like the past two weeks that they, they did it. Maybe. I can't remember exactly. <laughs> so, maybe that helps. Maybe you've guessed it. If not, here's your second hint. They were also our interns last summer. <gasps> no so, way. If you haven't guessed cool. it already, welcome to David and Stacia. Woo! Come on out, guys. Come on over. <laughs> So this is Stacia, one of our Horizon Kids in here. Hello. <laughs> um, Stacia, what is one thing you're looking forward to this summer? I'm super pumped for the summer party minis. That's what I'm excited for. Nice. So good. So I'm good. excited for them too. All right, and then say hello to David. What's up, guys? How is it going? What is one thing you're excited for? Yeah. I mean, summer. I was gonna say summer party minis, <laughs> but I mean, just the overall summer is just gonna be so much fun. There's so, much, so many things we're doing. Yep. So, get excited, guys. Nice. Awesome. Man, I'm excited too. I'm excited too. It's gonna be good. Okay, awesome. Well, I think we have a fun, yes. fun so, game. Or do we want to talk about summer party minis a bit more? Summer party minis. You might have heard about them already. Yes. We we said that last Sunday we were gonna have more information about the fun. Here is the fun. We, instead of the original summer party. We had to change it. It was too big. Yes, As it you was guys gonna be too probably big. well know, we can't have that many people all together at the moment. Yeah. So we have changed it. Yeah, but all those plans are on reserve and they will happen eventually when we can have big ones mm -hmm. again. But for now, we are doing mini versions of the summer party. Yes. So we're gonna have three summer party minis, mm -hmm. yeah? And all three of those are three days long. Well, three, three. What else is three? No, that's it. I don't know. But so there's one if you're nine to 12, there's one if you're five to seven, and there's one, oh, I missed one. There's one yes. if you're nine to 12, there's one if you're seven to nine, oh, and there's one if you're five to seven. Yeah. And so there, you can come to one of those and just choose, if you're like nine years old, you can come to the nine to 12 or the seven to nine, so you can make that decision but they're only able to be 40 kids at okay. each of those. So, tell your parents to get you signed up for those because spots are gonna fill up and you don't wanna miss out on the fun. You'll get to hang yes. out with your friends and we'll play some really fun games. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be so good. And for our junior leaders, mm -hmm. for our amazing junior leaders, we have some 
extra and some special spots for you guys yes. that aren't included in the 40. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to have you come help out this summer. Yeah. And also for our junior leaders. Talk to Carly. If you email, get yeah. your parents to talk to Carly. Let me know. And also for our junior leaders, mm -hmm. this Friday, we have a junior leader day where we're going to get our junior leaders, the ones who've already been junior so leaders, good. Um, together. And again, we have to cast This Friday? This Friday. Wow. So July 17th. Um, numbers, of course, are limited. And so we'll, um, we'll be sending out information to your parents. Make sure you tell them to check their emails because you're not going to want to miss out on this. We're going to get together with our junior leaders and have a bit of fun on Friday. So good. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. It's going to be fun. So cool. Okay. Now it's time for the oh, Weird Holiday. Yep. And for this, we are going to also initiate our interns. Whew. All right. I'm excited. So let's get set up. Okay. Cool. Here All we right. are. Here we are for our weird holiday and our intern initiation. So, um, little, little known fact, <laughs> July 15th is actually National Gummy Worm Day. You know, that is a very little known fact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if but you knew that, tell us. Great job. Yeah, well but, done. Um, yeah. Google, Google has told us that July 15th is National Gummy Worm Day, so we are celebrating. Because who doesn't love gummy worms? They're the best. That's true, especially sour neon worms. Mm -hmm. Sponsored by Safeway. <laughs> Save on. Save on. <laughs> Western family. <laughs> All right. So, it's not really. here's what we're going to do to celebrate National Gummy Worm Day. Our interns are going to compete. And they've got two pie plates. And we're going to put a bunch of gummy worms in each pie plate and then cover that with whipped cream. And then, without using hands, we're gonna put up a 30 second timer and in those 30 seconds, they, without using hands, will have to transfer the gummy worms from one plate to the other through the whipped cream. This sounds fun. I didn't know how this was gonna work, but this sounds great. <laughs> and uh, we will see who is able to get the most gummy worms. Okay. And I'm excited. They'll be covered in whipped cream. So it's going to be fun. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Let's get things set up. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. Okay. Carly, you want to do? Spread them around. And then, yeah, spread them out. Okay. And You guys excited? Uh, Who came up with this game? Stacia. Oh, Stacia. <laughs> this is all Stacia. I'm so sorry. So Give her like one. Why do I have so much <laughs> more? Well, I gotta see how far it goes. You gotta do more on David. Yeah, I know. I'm good. <laughs> Run up, yeah. Oh my gosh, we used up the whole game. That didn't go as far as I thought it would. That was a fresh game. Wow. Yeah, so have you ever wondered how much is in one of these? It's, this it's about one. two plate pliefuls. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Look, I added it to our beautiful decor. There you go. Right. Okay. Can I have a neon one? Sure. Okay. All right, contestants, are you ready? 30 seconds. Okay, here we go. Ready? So. Three, two, two one, one, go! This is my deep. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Stacia. Oh <laughs> okay, 10 more seconds. Speed it up. Actually, maybe we should make it a minute. Yeah. Let's make it a minute, okay. Put the timer back up. Okay. So, Aaron, it's another 30 seconds right. from now. Keep going. <laughs> Did you guys breathe? Alright, David, oh. crushing it. Come on, Stacia. Catch up. 20 seconds. 15. This does look pretty gross. <laughs> it was actually off the table. <laughs> Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nine, stop! stop. Oh. <laughs>
Oh, let's get as a close nice. up of those faces. <laughs> <laughs> I was just inhaling. <laughs> We don't have to do them. 17? Uh, 17. 17. No. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. wow. Okay. Another 10 seconds. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Probably, probably. Okay. I got three more. I got two more. Ah, oh, Stacia oh, Victoria. <laughs> that was an intense 10 oh, seconds. Awesome. Okay. Okay, Carly, you ready to go? No. No. <laughs> so Whoa. gross. We ran out of whipped cream, right? Okay. Wow, right. well, that was fun. That was very fun. Well, you guys can go get cleaned up. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Yep. So, guys, kids. One day, if you want to be a summer intern and come do this with us, you could, you do could that too. too. Anyway, okay, so what are we talking about today, Carly? Uh, birthdays. We haven't done birthdays yet. No, it is time for birthday shout outs. And we've got quite a few today. Quite a few. Yeah, so good. Awesome. Okay, first off, turning two this week is Baron. Happy birthday, bud. Happy birthday, Baron. Hope you have a great week. And. Also, also this week, Baron's older sister turning five. Happy birthday to Arbutus. Happy birthday. Very exciting. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Too close, so close together. So mm -hmm. rare. Next one is Victoria. Victoria is six years old. Whoa. Happy birthday, Victoria. Happy birthday. And also six years old Whoa. is the beautiful Faith. Woo! Happy birthday to Happy Faith. Happy birthday, Faith. So exciting. Awesome. And next we have Jared. Happy, happy birthday, Jared. Happy birthday, Jared. Hope you're having a great day. Yep. Kayla and Ella, go tell him to watch this video. Yep. Make sure they yep. watch because we're giving him a big birthday shout out because he's turning eight years old. Whoa. So exciting. Nice. Next up we have Minos Whoa. turning 10. Happy birthday, Minos. Happy birthday. And next up we have Denista. Danister. Danister. Sorry, turning 12. Happy birthday. Hope you have a great day. Happy birthday, Danister. And last but certainly not least, one of our amazing Horizon Kids Whoa. leaders. One of the original junior leaders yeah. as well. Yeah. And she's now old enough to be a regular A normal leader. leader. A leader leader. A leader leader. And she's in the three to fives group and she's done the nursery before as well. And so that's happy 15th birthday to Davina. Davina. Happy birthday, Davina. So exciting. Awesome. Hope well, all of these people have an amazing birthday. And oh, yes. if you know any of those names that we just gave a shout out to, make sure you give them a call, uh, write them a card, send them something special, make them feel special on their birthday. Yeah, so good. Awesome. So good. Well, this month's theme, mm -hmm. this month and next month, we're talking about focus. Well, I guess this month and last month, yeah. we were talking about focus. Yeah. yeah, tell us a bit focus. more about it, Carly. Yeah, so focus, take a closer look. That's our theme and we've been talking all about faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Nice. And we've been looking at Ephesians 2 verse 8 all this time and it says, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do, it is God's gift. Awesome. Awesome. And our bottom line today for is... For this week only. For this week is you can help others know Jesus. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in our Bible story video and the message afterwards. And then the so-and-so show. So show. good. So, show, 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 show. So-and-so show. So, and so, show. so <laughs> let's watch it together. Hello everybody, Erica here, and welcome back to another week in the STEAM Lab! 
Whenever you're learning new things, experimenting, inventing, or anything else one might do in a lab, you need to make sure you have faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And you also have to have something to work with. Today, I asked a few people to let me borrow their glasses for the day. Cheers! Just kidding! Eye glasses, not water glasses. <laughs> I see you! Uh, uh. Okay, these are reading glasses. They're supposed to help you see things better close up. Let's see. Oh, wow! Yep! They really work. I see things a lot more clearly. It's like, it's like, it's like focused, blurry. Focus! Blurry. But look what happens when I put on these glasses. They're for someone who is really farsighted. Wow! I can't see anything. I can't see anything. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like blurry, blurry. Focus, focus. Blurry, blurry. Focused. Isn't that wild? There are a lot of different kinds of glasses. And the reason is because there are a lot of different kinds of people. Not everyone sees the same way. And today's story is about when a guy named Paul met some people who saw things a little bit differently than he did. Go see for yourself. You, you, see, what I, you see what I did there? Ah. Okay. Meanwhile, I've got some more glasses to try on. Whoa. These are X-ray glasses. I can see my bones! Just kidding. <laughs> Seriously though, when did I get that freckle? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 16 through 34. Wherever Paul went, he boldly preached the good news of Jesus. This Jesus I'm telling you about is the Messiah. Many Jews and Greeks believed in Jesus, but in nearly every town, a group of Jews would gather to oppose Paul. He and his companions were forced out of Thessalonica, and then later, that same group of Jews followed to run Paul out of Berea. Eventually, the believers helped Paul escape to the coast, where he could travel by boat to Athens. Tell Silas and Timothy to join me as soon as they can. Once Paul reached Athens, he walked the streets of the ancient city, disturbed by what he saw, carved and molded statues everywhere. Statues of their gods. The people really believe false gods can help them. In fact, the Athenians believed in around 30,000 false gods. Yeah, they believed these gods were in charge of everything from uh, sports to sleep to doors and cleanliness. A god of grapes, okay. While Paul waited for his friends, he visited the Jewish synagogue to tell Jews and Greeks alike about Jesus. And in the marketplace, he spoke to anybody who would listen. You have to hear about Jesus. He was killed, but he came back to life. Paul's words stirred up a group of Athenian thinkers. These men felt that they could uh, achieve perfection through knowledge and wisdom. Can you explain what this fellow is chattering about? He seems to be telling us about gods we've never heard of. We shall take this Paul to a meeting of the Areopagus. There, we shall reason it out. Set high on an outcropping of rock, the Areopagus was the high court of Athens. And from this viewpoint, Paul could see all of Athens spread out below him. Closer at hand, the gathered Epicureans and Stoics studied Paul. What is this new teaching you're giving us? You have some strange ideas we've never heard before. Hmm, we would like to know what they mean. <sighs> Paul took a deep breath. These people treated new ideas like playthings, so he wanted to connect the story of Jesus with something they already knew. People of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. 
We are aware of this. Please proceed. Paul recalled a small carved altar he had discovered while exploring the city. As I walked around, I looked carefully at the things you worship. I even found an altar with to an unknown God written on it. Now, I'm going to tell you about this unknown God. Paul explained to them that the true God created the entire world and everything in it. He created each individual person with a purpose and an adventure to live. He did it so that people would seek him and find him, even though he is not far from any of us. Preposterous. Continue. Paul knew that these Athenians might listen to the words of their own writers that might actually reflect something of who God is. In him we live and move and exist. As some of your own poets have also said, we are his children. Uh, an, an interesting point. Paul told them that people are God's children. God is alive and real, not some carved statue or molded from gold. And now by sending Jesus, God was telling everyone everywhere to turn away from the bad things they've done and to follow him. God has proved this to everyone by raising Jesus from the dead. Preposterous! Fascinating. More like fantasy. Get this joker out of here. No, 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 no. This is new, uh, fresh. We will hear you speak about this again sometime. A man called Dionysius had been among the crowd at the Areopagus. He hurried to catch up as Paul left. I want to know more about this living God, about Jesus. I can help you, friend. So Paul continued to spread the good news and love of Jesus. And after a short time, Dionysius became a follower of Jesus, as well as a woman named Damaris and several others. It's a banana, but it just looks like a blurry yellow blob. Whoa! It's hard to focus when you can't see clearly, but I think it's important to try and see things from another person's point of view, like Paul and the people in Athens. They believed in different gods than Paul. That's why Paul tried to see things how they saw things, so he could tell them about Jesus in a way they'd understand. He told them about the living, one true God who created the whole world and everything in it. And he told them that God proved how powerful he was by bringing a man back from the dead. That man was God's son, Jesus. Many of the people from Athens had never heard of anything like that before. Some thought Paul was kinda crazy, but others wanted to hear more. And Paul was able to help them know Jesus the way he knew Jesus. That's something we can do too! It's the one thing to remember today. You can help others know Jesus. That can be easy if you're talking to someone who sees things the same way you do. But when someone sees things differently, when they believe differently, or when they've had different experiences than you, it helps to try and see things from their point of view. Oh, yes, I see what you're saying now. The best thing to do is to try to keep it real. Be honest about what Jesus has done for you. And it's not just in what you say. You can help people know Jesus by what you do, too. When you treat people with love, respect, and kindness, they can see the love of Jesus through you. Everyone's different, and we all see things just a little bit differently. So I think it makes sense to try to see things the way other people see them. And you don't even have to change your glasses to do it. I'll see you next time. Bye. See you guys later. Oh, hold on. Uh, oh, that's a table. All right. Well, hey everyone. All month long, we're talking about faith and how faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And today, specifically, our bottom line is how can you help others know Jesus? I love the Bible story that we just watched um, about Paul and what he was doing and, and the things that he said when he went to Athens. So first, I want to tell you about three interesting things. Okay, I've got three examples of things that were actually invented for a completely different purpose than what they ended up being. 
first thing is bubble wrap. How many of you love bubble wrap? I know I do. So much fun, endless entertainment, but it's also very practical because it wraps up fragile things and then you can send them in the mail or put them in a suitcase and they don't break, right? Well, interestingly enough, bubble wrap was not originally invented for that purpose. Did you know that bubble wrap was actually originally meant to be a type of 3D wallpaper? Pretty strange. And as it turned out, once they did that, they realized it's not very nice wallpaper, as you can imagine. So it didn't really work out the way they thought it was going to, but then someone discovered that, hey, actually, it's really good for wrapping up things that are breakable, like glass or china or anything like that and you can pack it away and it won't break. Very interesting. Second thing is a slinky. Do you guys know what a slinky is? It's a classic toy, so much fun. It bounces and wiggles around and you can uh, send it down the stairs and it just goes over and over and over down the stairs. Lots of fun. Well, did you know that it wasn't originally meant as a toy? Slinkies were actually an in-progress invention to try and help suspend sensitive shipboard instruments on board Navy ships. Pretty interesting. And as that invention was being developed, um, the guy who was inventing it, he dropped that slinky that he was using and it went down some stairs and he saw that it went down and down and down the way a slinky does and thought, hey, that's a pretty fun toy for kids. Now it didn't work out for the original purpose it was created for, but it ended up being a really great toy that has lasted so many years. Third thing, probably one of my favorite things, is Play-Doh. Did you know that Play-Doh was originally created with the intention of cleaning soot off of wallpaper that was nearby a fireplace? Well, you could just clean up the soot off of the wallpapers without wrecking the wallpaper by using the Play-Doh and cleaning it up. And then that became unnecessary because the wallpaper was, the type of wallpaper became different so you could clean it a lot easier with other things. So they didn't need Play-Doh to clean it anymore but it ended up becoming a great um, toy and activity for kids to play and be creative with. So much fun. So when the original purpose for all of these items didn't pan out the way that the inventor was hoping, someone helped them to see the potential in those items in a way that they might not have seen before and in a lot of cases ended up um, showing them that they could be used for something completely different and far better. Now, because as we know, bubble wrap is so great for um, keeping fragile things safe when you're moving or sending them in the mail, and slinkies are endlessly entertaining as you let them bounce down the stairs, and don't get me started on how much fun Play-Doh can be when you're just being creative and having fun with your friends. So those things remind me of this story that we just heard in our Bible story video about Paul. Because when Paul went to Athens, he saw that the people there, they thought they had some things figured out about what they believed, but they hadn't seen the whole picture yet. Now Paul had a different perspective than them, but he didn't step in and say to the people there, hey, you're wrong. What you believe is wrong. You need to stop immediately and start from the very beginning or else you're not gonna get to heaven. No, Paul didn't say that. Because if he did, I don't think that would have gone over very well. Instead, Paul took the time to get to know the people and to understand where they were coming from and what it was that they believed. And what I love about this story and, and seeing Paul's example is that Paul didn't laugh or scoff or make fun of them for their beliefs, and he didn't get angry or tell them that they were all doomed. He had compassion for them. 
He saw them and he saw their hearts the way Jesus would have seen them. And, and he wanted more for them because he, had, he felt love for them and compassion for them. See, kind of like those inventors with the bubble wrap and the slinkies and the Play-Doh, they thought that they knew where they were going. And they were pretty smart in coming up with those ideas, even for their original purpose. The Athenians, in the same way, they were also really smart people. They had a lot of ideas and um, a lot of the things they believed, all their many gods that they had, had some big stories and a lot of really in-depth reasonings for, um, for their beliefs and it made sense to the, uh, the Athenians. And so Paul stepped in and helped them see that the basis of their thinking was on the right track. See, because he came in and he said, he, he told them, I, I really appreciate that you guys have such religious beliefs and you are so invested in your religion. And he saw the good in that. And he affirmed them for, for that way of thinking. And then he helped them to see more of what that was. And, and he helped them see that there was just something more that they were missing that Paul could show them. See, Paul related to them by referring to one particular God that he had seen that the Athenians had a statue of, and they called this God the unknown God. And Paul took that and using their language and the things that they already created and, and came up with about that, Paul took that and used it to help show them that this unknown God that they were worshiping is actually Jesus. And, and he was able to open their eyes to so much more about who Jesus is and why he, being this unknown God, is actually the only God that they need. And because Paul was talking to them in this way with an understanding of what they believed already, they were willing to listen and consider um, consider his point of view and the things that he, were, he was saying. Because as you saw in the story, a lot of the people were actually starting to think, maybe I'll hear this guy out. What he has to say is kind of interesting and makes a lot of sense to me. And I think we can learn a lot from Paul's example about how he interacted with the Athenian people. When it comes to talking to our friends and others about Jesus, we can follow this example. Um, we can get to know people first in order to tell them, in order to understand their perspective. And then instead of just telling them that they're wrong and they need to change everything that they believe, we should have compassion for them and we should be understanding when we talk to them. We should approach that conversation in being calm and kind when we're talking to people. Because like I said, Paul didn't go in and tell them that everything they were doing was wrong and if they kept doing it, bad things were gonna happen. That would not have been kind. But Paul went in with so much kindness and compassion and that's what we should do as well. When we show our friends who God is in a way that they will understand, they'll become so much more open to the things you have to say about what you believe. And who knows? Maybe they would be willing to consider believing the same thing and even giving their lives to Jesus because they can see how real Jesus is through you. So my question for you today is how can you help others know Jesus? Throughout your life, you're gonna run into people who have a lot of different ideas about what God is like, or even if he exists. They'll have some ideas about what Jesus is all about, and some of those ideas might not be right, and might not be the same as what you think. But the more you get to know Jesus and learn God's word, like we're doing here today with our Bible stories, the better prepared you're gonna be to help have those conversations with kindness and compassion and to help other people understand what is true and what's from God's word 
and you'll be able to do it in a loving way. You might even be the one who helps someone discover who Jesus really is. So I'm gonna pray for you guys, and then we're gonna watch our so-and-so show. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the Bible and, and that we can follow this example in the Word of God and we can learn how we can interact with our friends who don't know you yet. God, I pray that you would help every single one of these kids who are watching today, that you would help them to understand how to um, spread your goodness and, and your amazing story about who you are to their friends, to those who don't know you yet, and that you would help them to do it with kindness and compassion and truth and understanding. We thank you so much, Jesus. In your name, everyone said together, amen. All right, let's go check out our so-and-so show. Are you trying to catch a fly with chopsticks blindfolded? What does it look like I'm doing? Wouldn't a fly swatter be easier? It is said one who captures a fly with chopsticks can do anything. Really? Yeah. Can I try? Uh, <laughs> sure. All right. Mm. Focus. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that was easier. <clears throat> Welcome to the So and So Show in 3D! Whoa! 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 Yeah! I'm Brandon! And I'm John, and it's nice to meet you. Here, here, let's shake hands! Whoa! Whoa! Amazing ride! It's like you're practically here in the room with us! Yeah, so you can join us in this Nerf fight! Yes! Woo! Boom! Boom. Oh, mine doesn't work very mine well. Mine either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Oh! I don't know the trick. Oh, man. Oh, wow. I hope we didn't hit anyone. <laughs> you all can thank John for making this possible. He's the one that sent you the 3D glasses that you're wearing right now. Nerf fight again! Boom! 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 <laughs> what happened? Are you out of... Are you out of No, uh, nothing, cards? nothing. It's nothing. It's, it's just nothing. Oh, it's clearly something. No, no, it's just that you, uh, you know how I said I'd send 3D glasses to everyone who watches the show? Yes. I did not do that! Nerf fight! Hey! John! Hey! John! John, stop it! Stop! Oh, okay. Look, if, if they're not wearing the glasses, then it's not in 3D, and we're just throwing stuff at the camera. Oh, I'm sorry. I knew I should have asked Ron to send out the glasses. Well, it's just that I was busy buying the ping pong balls and the Nerf darts and I just, wait, 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 Ron? Who's Ron? He's a new friend of mine. Anyway, today on our apparently two-dimensional version of the no, show. No, no, wait, 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 wait. New friend. What? Your new friend? You said you had a new friend. Like who? Yeah. I mean with, I mean, is there, a, oh, who's Ron? It's, he's just a guy that I met. You. You'd like him, actually. <sighs> you would. I mean, you guys are into a lot of the same things. You comic books, soccer, air drumming, food. I do like food. Yeah. But I don't think I like this Ron fellow. I mean, what kind of name is Ron anyway, right? It's three letters. What's it short for? Rondiculous? <laughs> Ronald, I think. <laughs> That's Rondiculous. Look, I'm telling you, you'd like him. He, he, he even overreacts to little things like you do. Overreacts? How dare you? <laughs> that hurts, man. 
<laughs> that really hurts. Uh-huh. So maybe if you just got to know Ron, you would feel differently. I could introduce you. Never. I don't like Ron. Mm -hmm. I don't. And I don't want to get to know him. Come on. I, I, mm. could, I could set up a meeting. It could be right here or, or at the comic book store down the street. I will not meet Ron here or there. Okay. I will not meet Ron anywhere. Would you meet Ron in a house? I would not meet Ron in a house. Would you meet Ron with a mouse? I would not meet Ron in a house. I would not meet Ron with a mouse. I will not meet Ron here or there. I will not meet Ron anywhere. How about in a box? Not in a box or with a fox or on a train or in a tree. I will not meet Ron, Brandon. Now please let me be. <laughs> what? Nothing, nothing. Hey, listen, we're friends, right? Well, what, you, you and me or, or you and Ron? Me and you, we're friends. Yeah, I used to think so. Well, we know we are, and you trust me, right? I mean, I've never given you any reason not to trust me. No, I trust you. All right, good, then you can trust me when I say that Ron is a good guy and you would really like him, okay? What are you doing? I'm texting Ron and telling him to come over. No, yes, no, I am. I'm I'm no. I'm doing, it's done, it's done. Huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> He's coming over now. <laughs> You're gonna like Ron. <laughs> Whatever. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, everybody. Who wants a slice of pizza? Reach out and take it. Oh, uh, we're not doing 3D anymore, Kellen. Oh. Why not? We forgot to send out the glasses. Bet Ron wouldn't have forgotten. Oh. <gasps> Who's Ron? Brandon's new best friend who never makes mistakes and does everything right all the He's time. Not my new... Do you have a Bible story for us, Kellen? I do. It was going to be in 3D with lots of computer graphics and lasers and special effects, and we spent this year's budget making it. But since no one has 3D glasses, let's do some human head puppet theater! Today's story is about Paul. Oh, I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. What? No, not Paul Bunyan. Paul the Apostle. The Paul who used to put people who believed in Jesus in jail until he saw Jesus and became one of Jesus' followers. That, Paul. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Carry on. When Paul became a believer in Jesus, he made it his mission to travel the world to tell people Jesus' story. That's why Paul was in Athens, Greece. Oh, I'm in Athens, Greece for the whole day. I don't cut trees down, but that's okay. What is this unusual statue? I ah! am Zeus. The god of thunder. See my lightning bolt? Shazam! <laughs> god of thunder? Is, is that a thing? Oh, sure, sure. Athens has all sorts of gods. Uh, god of music, goddess of love, a god of responsible dental hygiene. <laughs> We're everywhere! Shazam! But there's only one true god. I am very upset. <laughs> hey, don't insult me. Didn't I mention I got a lightning bolt? You're going down, mortal! Stop it! Shazam! 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 Mm. It is true that Paul was upset when he saw all the statues built to honor other gods, but the statues, they didn't speak. They just kind of stood there. Aw, oh, man. Better. There are statues of gods everywhere. There's a god of woodworking, a god of the sea, and what's this? An altar? To an unknown god? I've got to talk to someone about this. Shazam! Shh, sorry. Now here's something that you should know about Athens when Paul was there around 2,000 years ago. Athens was full of smart thinkers and philosophers, but they weren't very familiar with the story of Jesus. So Paul had some work to do. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Are you from Athens? Toga, 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 ah! 
Yeah, okay. Uh, I just wanted to say, Jesus has risen from the dead. Toga? You know they would have said more than just toga. It's the only Greek word I know. Ah, okay. The people were confused by what Paul was telling them, so they took him to a meeting of the Areopagus, where some of the brightest, most powerful people in Athens would talk about the latest ideas. People of Athens, I can see that you are very religious. I saw all the things you worship, even an altar to an unknown god. Toga, toga, toga. I'm going to tell you about this unknown god. Toga? He is the God who made the world and everything in it. He gives life to all people. Toga? Toga. It's true. You, you know how some of your poets have said, we are God's children? Toga. That's right. We are God's children. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't think God is a statue made out of stone. God can raise a man from the dead. Hmm. The people of Athens listened. They liked to hear thoughts and ideas that challenged what they believed. But when they heard Paul talk about the dead being raised, well, some of them made fun of the idea. <laughs> Tuga! But some wanted to hear more. Tuga. And some became followers of Jesus. Tuga! No, wait, wait, wait. I thought of another word. Euro! The people of Athens may have never seen Jesus, but Paul was able to help them have faith in someone that they couldn't see. The end. Fun story, guys. Thanks for your help. Thank you, Kellen. Way better than that 3D story you had planned, right? Sure. Hey, Paul was awesome. He wanted anyone and everyone to know Jesus. Right. He knew that if people got to know Jesus, their lives would be changed forever. Yeah. And he always found different ways to share the good news of Jesus to different people. It was so important to him. Hey, thank you so much, Kellen. You're an awesome 2D storyteller. Good to know. See you guys next time. Hey, say, listen, about this whole Ron situation, I think I understand. Oh, hold that thought. Uh, come in, Ron. I like him already. Reveal the question. How can you help others know Jesus? Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. We all know it's important for people to know who Jesus is and what he's done for us. So what are some ways you can help people know Jesus' story? Uh, you can tell them the story through Dr. Susie and Rhyme. That's hilarious. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. You could also invite someone to church. That's a good answer. Or you could tell them about the show. I was going to say the same thing. You were? Totally. Get out. That's ridiculous. Hey, you want to go out and get some food? You bet. I love food. All right. I'll meet you at a restaurant right after the show. You bet. Hey, Ron, you're my new best friend. You? I told you you'd like him. I would meet Ron with a mouse. All righty. Hey, thanks for tuning in, folks. This was the So-and-So Show. Bye. Hey, I'm coming, best friend. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like, I like food. <laughs>
at home, maybe at the dinner table or in a car ride, just to keep the conversation going and make this message apply to your life every day. So good, awesome. Yeah. So the first question to discuss mm -hmm. is when someone is unkind to you, how does it make you feel and what does it make you think? What about when someone is kind? Mm. Yeah, two kind of sides to that coin. Yeah. yeah. And then the second question is how does treating someone well help them know Jesus? That's good, awesome. And question three is what's one way you could show someone Jesus? Mm. Great mm. question. All good questions. Awesome, well we hope that you guys at home have a great discussion about this and we can't wait to see you at the Junior Leader Day or the Summer Party Minis coming up and we will see you on the vlog next week. Awesome. See you later guys. See ya. Bye.